decoding digital assets, are we ready for the revolution? Um, been hearing a lot about crypto. Um, is, it, you know, is, is the crypto winter over? Is crypto over? Is it here to stay? What's next? What are the next digital assets? So we're going to spend the next 50 minutes talking to that a little bit. My name is Andreas Traum, partner with uh, PwC in our financial services advisory practice out of Berlin, Germany. Um, been working in capital markets consulting for over 25 years. I now have the pleasure of looking after our service offering, what we call digital assets and crypto, and that's fantastic for me because it keeps, the topics keep changing, it's still new, I learn something every day, and happy in this space to be working with both our traditional clients, so traditional TradFi companies that are navigating towards digital assets and crypto, but also what I like to call the new kids on the block, sort of the crypto natives, crypto exchanges, DEXs, and now we'll be looking at the next asset classes to come. I think when we talk about the traditional banking industry, and a lot of that was in the panel just now, also you could hear that, you know, there's a lot of things affecting a traditional financial um, services company. Now, I get asked a lot, and actually this just this morning I had a call from a friend, he's actually a board member for a very classic uh, savings bank, asking me, are you still doing crypto? Are you still doing digital assets? Isn't that dead now? And so I say, okay, if you ask that question, maybe you should be looking at your own um, business model and the challenges that you're facing. So we've seen you know, technology, the onset of technology, now also a topic that I could have talked about 25 years ago, been doing digitalization, especially in capital markets. I think the um, trading industry that we see today is actually, um, you know, was facilitated by technology, but now we're seeing, again, a new era. Um, I had the pleasure of yesterday and today sitting through the, um, on the jury of the Impact Startup Awards, looking to a lot of you know, champions of new technology, and it's really fascinating to see how young people with great ideas putting technology to use and actually changing the way that we can think, do, and feel the financial industry. I think customers are playing a big role as well. Um, we have, uh, you know, customers now are much more willing to change. Now, um, in a crypto survey that PwC did last year, we actually saw that many re retail customers only doing crypto, they would like to get that service from their house bank. But if you're not getting that service, you're switching. If we look at, and just this morning, another headline of a large direct bank giant uh, waking up out of the uh, interest rate coma with uh, you know, interest rates, money market accounts now offering 2, 3, 3.5%, we see customers jumping accounts like crazy. So that loyalty is not there, another challenge for the traditional banking industry. Um, and then if we look at the market, if we look at cost pressures, that's another factor. I think traditional banking models are being threatened. The um, return uh, on traditional products uh, is consistently decreasing. If we look at now pressures through you know, the interest rate uh, economy, I think that's, that's another factor that is definitely changing the way banks have to look at their business model. In addition, new competitors entering the market. Now, um, we like to draw this big you know, web, if you, you know, actually now it's bigger than one slide, looking at all of the emerging ecosystem. And if you look at it, basically the uh, new competitors have a couple of USPs compared to traditional banks. One is, if you look at neo brokers, crypto exchanges, they offer integrated solutions, basically end to end, you can do it all on an end user device, something if you come from a traditional bank that is still, you know, you can still only dream about. Efficiency. The new players do not have the burden of legacy systems. Now, if you've been working, you know, with banks and maybe in, you know, IT services, system integration, you know, um, just looking at the cost of maintaining legacy infrastructure, applying new regulation to it, it just slacks you down. Um, that's an advantage that basically the, the new incumbents, uh, the new competitors do not have. With that comes cost efficiency. You can offer services at a much better price level. If we look at you know, what neo brokers are doing, payment providers, when you know, PayPal entered the payment services, that completely changed the way we think about payment transactions. Um, and that's basically here to stay. 
in addition, new products. We just uh, learned today, uh, we just saw a presentation today about a new uh, trading and settlement system based on the DLT pilot regime, new products, and that's what we're gonna look at next, basically looking at new digital assets. Looking at the challenges that we just talked about, digital assets provide a number of benefits. Uh, if you look at just the, uh, basically the product range gets expanded, we're looking at security tokens, and we're talking a little bit about that afterwards. Efficiency, basically technology now, DLT, provides the ability to do T plus zero settlement, instant settlement. We had EIB this year issue uh, a large bond that was settled with settlement finality in less than one minute. Whereas this traditional corporate bonds looking at a settlement cycle of T plus five. Costs, obviously, if you look at basically cutting out intermediaries in your end-to-end -end, uh, financial market, that also has the potential to significantly um, lower cost. Um, and if we look at tokenized securities, basically on a DLT, uh, you have global reach. Um, we, in another presentation today, we saw that 1.7 billion adults today do not have access to a bank account. If they have access to internet, they will have the ability to access tokenized securities. Now, <laughs> obviously coming from a big four, uh, we have to talk about uh, regulation, and I could spend the whole 15 minutes just talking about this one slide. Um, but uh, that aside, basically the one thing that I would like to leave you with from this, from this slide is that actually the development of regulation is not just a burden, but it provides legal clarity and that is a good thing. If we just look at, you now basically digital assets from the onset, um, basically 2009, very first Bitcoin. Why was Bitcoin created? What was the answer to? Was the answer to the financial crisis of 2000, 2007, 2008? And the uh, client's loss of trust in traditional financial instruments. And this is where it's taking us now. We've seen tremendous um, uptake on regulation, actually Germany being a you know, very early mover um, with our you know, crypto custody, with our entering fin um, cryptocurrencies as uh, financial instruments into the uh, Banking Act. And then this year, obviously in April, uh, Mika being voted into power and uh, actually June 8th um, published in the official journal of the European Union and therefore becoming law. Another um, development also, the um, DLT pilot regime uh, went into effect in March, so basically offering a new look at what traditionally we'd be looking at with MIFID. So we've got Mika, and we've got DLT pilot regime, basically revolutionizing all types of traditional assets. Tokenized assets now are becoming real. Now this looks like a really you know, sharp increase, it is. Um, basically, the total number of, this is German market now, of actual so, uh, tokenized securities being publicly issued on the blockchain. We're looking at a total of 34 uh, issuances so far. Total value about 300 million. I think the largest single one, um, Siemens, um, blocked, uh, issued on uh, Ethereum uh, uh, a corporate bond of 60 million. So this is just to show very infancy, but it is happening. We do see these we can actually see them on the blockchain. It's not just proof of concepts anymore, uh, but they are actually real. You can go look for them. You actually find these tokens if you go look, if you find, if you know the wallet address. Having said that, we, what we did here is we looked at um, press publications, just basically scanning all types of you know, financial media from 2001 uh, to today. Just looking at you know, what are kind of the hit phrases that we see um, and we actually took always, it had to take you know, two corroborating uh, publications for, for this to get, to get a hit. And what you see uh, is basically looking at you know, the matrix of market presence, maturity level, uh, basically you see a couple of trends emerging, um, tokenized shares, tokenized bonds. Uh, interestingly, we've been talking about crypto custody, is actually being mentioned less. Crypto Securities Registry, or the wonderful German word of crypto wert, Papier Registerführer, um, actually being up there. But we do see a big emergence of tokenized bonds and really the core digital asset platform, which we believe will be the future of capital markets. Now, tokenization, 
If we look at the numbers, um, so far, I said 34 transactions so far. The projected volume uh, per year, just for security tokens in Europe, is estimated to hit almost 1 billion um, by 2026. At the same time, uh, market researchers uh, estimate that it's going to hit parity with crypto securities. Now looking at 2 trillion uh, global volume, so by 2026, security tokens actually being at level uh, with classical crypto instruments. Um, regulatory evolution, what we're seeing here. So actually, um, I spend a lot of time talking, obviously, to my colleagues worldwide. And what we talk about today is what we call regulatory arbitrage. If you've been following what's happening in the United States, SEC, CFTC competing with each other, um, Congress entering a bill to actually you know, fire the chairman of the SEC because they think uh, he's creating havoc with the markets, actually a big chance um, for Europe now that we've uh, issued Mika and the DLT pilot regime. Uh, so people are talking about, is this the new fortress Europe? Um, so it is a big chance. We're seeing a lot of development in uh, the uh, United Arab Emirates region. Um, with uh, VARA being a brand new regulation for crypto instruments, we have both the uh, Dubai financial uh, um, industry and Abu Dhabi general markets, each offering their own type of crypto regulation and very much attracting business. So question is, yeah, are, is this trend going to be leaving the US? Is it moving to Europe? Is it moving to, to Asia? Um, seeing a lot of um, basically movement happening globally. I think with that, basically the global reach and the potential for tokenization, if we look past what we're seeing now, we're seeing very much bonds, corporate bonds being issued. Uh, we're seeing infrastructure bonds by the likes of development banks, European Investment Bank. But the actual potential is tremendous. If we just think about you know, the total turnover of classical securities traded is more than 100 trillion. Dollars, And if we think further and look at what tokenization can actually bring into capital markets, because we can tokenize real-world assets, but we can also tokenize intellectual property. We can tokenize data. So that basically is absolute uh, tremendous potential um, for, for tokenization. And with that, it's going to stay interesting. I think it's going to be, uh, continue to be a very you know, fascinating industry to be in. Um, it's been fantastic to just listen to two days of the um, Impact Startup Awards and so seeing just all these new, idea, new ideas coming up. And I think uh, there's a lot still to stay hopeful for um, and continue to see an endless crypto summer. And with that, any questions? That's not the case. I'm not going to keep you from your break. So let's revolutionize digital assets together. Thank you very much. Thank you.